Battlefield 5 in terms of everything from production to promotion to release and to how the company that owns it feels about its customers has to be one of the most worst things ever to come out of popular media in the last 20 or so years. It's worse than Ghostbusters. It's worse than The Last Jedi. It's like every time one of these things happens, it gets worse when a company or someone is so apathetic towards their audience, they're willing to do any and all things to try to fuck up everything within it. And that's going to factor a lot into this review. And I'm not doing this with a script. It's just me and my thoughts. And you might notice how the gameplay footage is not from Battlefield 5. Yes, it's going to all be from Battlefield 1. As someone who's recently started to get back into it, I realize that there's more to that game than it seems. I'm actually kind of more interested in Battlefield 1 than I was when I first got it, than when it was released. You know, I've come to appreciate it a little bit. So, let's get into this. So Battlefield 1, we're going to start off with the promotion of the game. We're going to start with everything leading up to the release, and then we will talk about the game. So I'll split it up here. We'll go into the release, then we'll go into the gameplay. And so, the game's first trailer was launched during the summer of 2018. You know, this year. And it was not very well re received, mostly because people did not know what they were going for. To top that off, they put a lot of focus on this Scottish woman with a robotic arm or something. And people were just confused. We were like okay and just to be clear i'm not sure if the battlefield community wanted like a modern battlefield this year i'm not sure about that i'd have to look into it in order to get the full context of that but people were really confused it was just a bunch of action stuff things happening everywhere all these set pieces that you would think would be coming straight from a call of duty game but that's how it was and so people were just confused we were like hey this thing ain't very good and, and then a lot of people got mad about the fact that there was a Scottish woman with a prosthetic arm running around. And then to find out shortly after that the cover of the game would have a woman on the cover, even though it's supposed to be a World War II shooter. And so you're thinking to yourself, that's pretty bad. That, why are they doing that? That's not, why are they leading a woman as the, as the promotional face of your game? And here's the thing, unlike Battlefield 1, where like when you choose the missions, you'll have the guy on the covers talking about like different things that are happening in the war when you go into certain sections, she's not in the game whatsoever. And so you're thinking to yourself, what are they trying here? And then you hear then the controversy just sparks up, you know, people are really just not happy with this. And then Patrick Soderland and a chief designer at DICE whose name I'm not going to mention because I'm not going to bother looking it up, really said some stupid shit. So Patrick Soderlin implied that people were not educated on World War II to say that there were no women that actually fought in the war, which is ridiculous. Most people know that there were some women who fought in the war, especially if you're talking about stuff like the French Resistance. So to say that and say that your whole community is uneducated on the issue is highly inaccurate. And both of these guys brought their daughters into it. Soderlin said that his daughter's 13 and plays Fortnite. Talk about that. She's like, I can play as a woman in Fortnite. Why can't I play as a woman in Battlefield? And it's like, well, first of all, why are you letting your daughter play Battlefield? Second of all, you know, it's like, why are you using your daughter as like a go-to in order to push your agenda here? And it's pretty obvious it was an agenda-driven thing. And so you go on further. Go on to this other guy. He's like, he also uses his daughter. Say, why are people being so mean to women and stuff like that? And you're just like, stop. Stop treating your customers like you're dumb. And then Patrick Soderlin also came out with one thing that probably just ended up killing the game for good. Killing it before it was ever released. If you don't like it, don't buy it. And when it comes to the release of the game, it's exactly what people did. And so... You have that controversy going on. Then Angry Joe, one of the, you know, more respected names on YouTube, mostly for his game reviews, 
makes a really stupid video defending EA, ironically, even though he's supposed to be bashing quote unquote EA. He's, he starts off the video, he's like, EA fucked up again, but then he's like, he they just fucked it up with like putting it in a different scheduled place or something like that. And how, and he criticized the trailer too, but then he started saying stuff like, oh, all these MAGA hatters are being angry because there's women in this shooter and they don't want women in their games, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, uh, dude, are you, what are you talking about? And this is coming from the guy who months earlier criticized Call of Duty World War, World War II for throwing historical accuracy right out the window, which is what called it, which is what Battlefield 5 did. They did the same thing. And he's defending EA over this, ironically enough. And you're just like, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? And then peep, and then drags people into the like the quartering and Griffin Gaming and other people into it, strawmanning everybody's perspectives on it, and him getting a bunch of flack for it. And and you know, he was very act, act, acting very much on a confirmation bias, and that did not help. That probably furthered the divided discussion between the Battlefield community, casual gamers, and everyone else. And the shill games media, as the quarterly puts it, out there saying, oh, oh my god, all EA, stand, Dice and EA are standing up to the racist, sexist man babies that are entitled and blah, 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 blah. And you're just like, this is not a good look for your game. This is not a good look for your game. Why are you doing this shit? And then when you actually, and you know, this has topped it off that the reveal trailer and the reveal of the campaign, not the campaign, reveal the gameplay, was also topped off with Trevor Noah and all that stuff. And you're just like, why are you doing this? Why? And so you move on more, you get the open beta. Open beta does not impress anybody. I did not get the open beta. All right, as a guy who did not plan to get Battlefield 5, I did not get the open beta. And it was just like, people were just unimpressed. They just felt like everything was just Call of Duty in terms of gameplay. You know, that drove away more people. Even people who were still genuinely interested in the game were like, this is underwhelming. And then comes the release. A few, a couple or a few weeks ago, right now, the game released. And oh my god, did it fail hard. It's not only were the pre-order sales down almost 80-something percent, I think it was, over Call of Duty Black Ops 4, a game mired in controversy because of the lack of content that it would have on day one release, including a lack of single player campaign, out pre ordered Battlefield 5. You're just like, how the hell would this happen? Well, it happened because EA and Dice fucked up. Alright, and the game selling, despite the fact that it was, you know, released around Black Friday down 50 fucking percent in some places as as high as 50 percent to the discount S some places about 40 percent discount not 40 percent yet but about 20 or 30 dollars off the game so you're just looking at it and man this is pretty bad for dice and ea and then dice does the absolute dumbest thing the absolute dumbest thing Instead of trying to fix the problems with the game that people are having, like bad technical issues, long wait queues trying to get into the multiplayer, all of these different things, you're just like, instead of actually trying to address these issues and actually try to fix it, they delayed a patch for one day, and then at a celebration party for the release of it in Sweden, which is where DICE, I'm pretty sure, is located, mainly, they troll the game community, the people who love Battlefield, the people who are saying that Battlefield 5 has been ruined because of the social justice bullshit that they keep pushing. They get trolled by DICE. I basically, they made fun of their entire fan base because they didn't like the direction that Battlefield 5 was going in. On, they have on this big ass screen comments from the YouTube comment section on the trailer talking about oh gender field 5 everything's ruined because they keep trying to revise World War 2 history and stuff like that you know legitimate concerns people had with the game and basically brush it off no, no your game is getting discounted as much as 30 
fucking dollars on release day and afterwards and only the first couple weeks of it of its release you should not be having a celebration of a release party you should be fucking scrambling right now okay all right and the i think the only reason that they canceled that patch for one day was the fact they wanted to troll their community because i don't think dice cared Dice did not care about its community when it came to this game and it fucked everything up in the process Okay, and that's everything I will give for the background context of everything that led up to the release of Battlefield 1. Now we will go into the actual gameplay. Now we will go into the game and what it has to offer. And boy, oh boy, does it fail hard. It has such a lack of content for a day one base game that it rivals fucking Halo 5 Guardians. Or at least Halo 5 Guardians had a freaking campaign for you to play that you could play offline. But Battlefield 5, you have three missions. And going through them, you can complete them in either a little under an hour or just a little bit over an hour. So that's three hours, three fucking hours of gameplay. Three hours in terms of a war story. Okay, now I'm gonna go, I'm going right now onto my YouTube channel to see how long my Halo 5 Guardian review, uh, not review, my Halo 5 Guardian Let's Play took in terms of playtime for me. Alright, because I'm guarantee you, that's 15 missions, but the few of them where you don't actually get to play, I have 9 videos posted of it. 9 videos. And they, and uh, well, 8 videos. They all take them between 30, 20 or 30 minutes. One of them's even 45 minutes long. I think no yeah one of them's 45 minutes long okay so that's a lot more content in one in Halo 5 Guardians than there was in Halo that there was more content in Halo 5 Guardians than there was in Battlefield 5 on base day all right and just like Halo 5 Guardians guess what no split screen no offline multiplayer at all so that's another kick in the dick to everyone and you have three war, st war stories, and one that was supposed to come out on December 4th, but it got delayed a day because, you know, DICE wanted to jack itself off. And the multiplayer was a jumbling mess. Alright, and it didn't even come with, like, a practice range for, like, newcomers or people who were, like, trying to get back into the series. Some time to get used to the gunplay, because it plays a lot differently from a lot of shooters in terms of how it, you can aim a weapon and stuff like that. There's a lot of stuff you can do with your character. You know? They didn't have that on base day. So you're just like, what the fuck? Why should I even buy this game? It has such a lack of content. Alright, and if you're a guy like me, who has Wi-Fi that does not, you know, really work well in terms of gaming. Like, it doesn't really do well when it comes to online multiplayer. Yeah, I can't play online multiplayer because this fucking thing sucks. And even then... It took me like three minutes at least and almost five minutes maximum just to get into a queue to get a game going and when it did it just dropped me on one map by myself with no one else okay that, that's pretty bad but let's just go into the technical problems with the freaking gameplay oh my god Never have I ever seen a game just absolutely fuck up a waypoint system like Battlefield 5 did. Now this only happened to me once, but that is a game breaking glitch. To have your waypoints just automatically reset when you get to where you're supposed to go, so that way you have to go back to an area you already cleared, that's pretty freaking bad in terms of game design. That's pretty bad. Alright, and that happened to me on the freaking Nordley's mission. I'm just walking through there, I'm at the bridge, I'm about to do the thing, and then it sends me all the way back somewhere else. And I can never find where it was telling me to go, because it wasn't supposed to be there. And it's just pitiful. Why is it like that? And top that off, your character model, like when you're meleeing, or sliding, or sometimes even when you're reloading, is so freaking glitchy that it gets on my freaking nerves. Like, you just could not really do anything with it. It was that bad. And then, there are some... Sometimes, the texture of the game would just die. 
Like there was one part where there was a bunch of rocks that I saw on the ground. That just on the ground turned blue. Like right after I died at one point, or actually I had to reset a checkpoint. And then I come back in, and there's a bunch of blue rocks on the ground. It's like, why are they blue? Why are they so fucking blue? This thing's broken. And then the cutscenes would also lag a bunch. Despite the fact that they are actually the te best technical thing in the game is the cutscenes. So you're just like, why? What is wrong with this? And then that's when you get into the campaign missions. And the American Krogan has a good video on the base game's war stories and how all of them kind of fuck with historical accuracy in a way. The biggest one, of course, being Nordley's. The mission where you play as the daughter of a Norwegian scientist, I guess, that's trying to stop the production of heavy water. And there was a real-life story to that one. That, that took a lot of time to actually do. That could have made its own fucking game about the operation where they these Norwegian commandos took down the heavy water. That was, an, that was completely brushed aside and DICE and EA even fucking admit it. They even admit it in the game that this was not what was done. That the, what you just played through was not what actually happened. They even fucking admitted it in the goddamn game. That's bad. That is really fucking bad. That you're just going to revise history. Just put two women in there just for the sake of inclusion. Just, just write out eight people from their own fucking story. Yeah, that's fucking... Yeah, who, who possibly thought that was a bad idea? But what a great, what a great thing that you did. And then under no flag, you know... They did not have criminals in this, you know, bomb squadron. They did not have criminals, though, that one, you could probably retcon some stuff in there. All right, and that one's not bad, because they're not writing people out of history. It's just historical fiction. That's the most fictionist of them all, other than Nordley's. But they just did it to have more with, to do with characterization. Despite the fact that that's probably the shortest mission in the entire campaign, except maybe The Last Tiger, I felt more connected with the characters there because they actually did something with the characterization of the characters. And then you have the mission where you play as the French colonial soldiers. That one is the most accurate in terms of historical accuracy, but there's so much wrong with it because the, the people at DICE use it to speak of it as like a thing against like you know America even though this was like a French thing that they were doing where like these French these African Frenchmen since you know French the French still had colonies in uh, Africa but these Frenchmen were not you know given recognition that they were written out of their own stories and everything like that which was a lie because these people were recognized they just use it to promote this really stupid thing about racism. Even though I'm pretty sure the French were pretty damn happy to have them on their side. Alright, because you remember that the black like you know the black soldiers from the United States who were sta stationed in France at the time of World War One, I, I think there was a lot of them that stayed there for a little while that might have even actually lived there for the rest of their lives. Pretty sure that happened. And then you had people, you know, who came back and used stuff from France, you know, to get ahead in their lives. So it's just like, logic EIC does not compute. And you're just like, well, this is pretty underwhelming. All right, and two out of three of those missions have almost nothing to give for you to care about in terms of the characters and the gameplay. The gunplay can be fine once you get used to it if you're new, though if you're trying to start off on Under No Flag with the Thompson, get a fucking MP40, because trying to use that Thompson is just almost impossible, unless you're at really close range. And another thing, 
the fucking HUD, Jesus Christ, the HUD gets on my nerves so much because it'll be telling you to go someplace, but then you look so, but if you look at just a little plane of light, just the tiniest little plane of light, it'll make it to where you can barely see anything. And you can barely read the subtitles when it's talk, like when you're listening to people who are speaking in a different language, which happens in three fourths of the campaign. You can barely read them. So I'm just like, why? Just why? And then that was it. But then we have The Last Tiger, which is the best of the four war story missions because one, it is Viscaral and how it portrays the actual tiger mission. Like, it's very Viscaral, it's deep, it's heart wrenching. It's basically Fury, only with not as much time to develop the characters. And that's basically it. It's basically kind of like Fury, only it sh- only they're using it to show, like, you know, and I'm not even sure this is based on a real story, but I actually liked this one a lot because it was, it was brutal. And it showed you, aside from the Nazis that you've probably seen before, that you would, that you do see in Fury, like if you're a coward, and you desert, and you get caught, you get hanged, and a little thing wrapped around your throat saying that I'm a coward as you die, and stuff like that. And how some soldiers like would shoot other people if they're like, even if they're injured and they can't fight anymore, they'll, they would get shot because he, they didn't want to fight anymore. No, there's a lot of deep stuff in that mission. It's just a shame that it was only given about 50 or so minutes to actually develop. And that's basically it. That's basically it from the story perspective. Such a lack of content. Barely four hours of gameplay. Maybe even four and a half if you get lucky. That's... Okay, Dead Space 1. I can get through Dead Space 1 in six and a half hours. But yet the amount of content in that game is just so overwhelming that it's just a joy to do again and again and again. Here I have no reason to freaking replay any of these missions. I don't. Alright, because one, you're, you're, you're making every different war story. Only with Battlefield 1, they gave you different parts to partake in it. They actually at least lengthened it a little bit so that way you could have something to do with the characters that could that you're with and stuff that you could do with the game and you can get used to things you can get used to the weapons that you're using you get used to the to the uh, vehicles and everything but here it's just so short you aren't you by the time you get to the next mission and you need to do something that you're barely gonna have experience with and it just hurts that just hurts the gameplay even further and you're just trying to make sense of it all. You're trying to do all these things, but yet you're so inexperienced. And even if you're probably, I mean, I, I mean, I bet if you're a hardcore Battlefield player, you could probably get through everything just fine. But for newcomers and moderates, it's pretty difficult to get into. And it's just, it's sad to see, you know, a franchise as beloved as Battlefield. Right? It's a guy who is not a big fan of the Battlefield games. As who only legitimately found interest in their World War II games and in Bad Company. You know, it's it's sad to see. You had a franchise that was so beloved from a developer that most people trusted was just, you know, thrown to the wind. No, it's just, it's just sad to see. So, if you want my honest little score of it all, I give it like a, a 4 out of 10. That's how bad I hate this game, because while the gunplay can get fun, if you once you get used to it, it can get fun. The lack of base content, no story for anything, outright bullshit political crap coming from EA and DICE, you know, just revising everything so that way they could fit a modern socio-political agenda. You know, that hurts the experience a lot, and the technical problems and the multiplayer. You know, it's just, it's just a, it's just a really bad taste in your mouth. 
that makes you never want to pick it up again. And that's my thoughts over Battlefield 5. That is my full review. A 4 out of fucking 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. I spent a couple weeks playing through this game. I decided, you know what? I need to make a review. And I can put it down maybe for good. Unless they release more content that I can cover later in the near future. So thank you so much.